this uh, is uh, a day to talk about public policy. And I've given the topic, uh, the title today, of a conservative case for immigration reform. And that may strike some of you as an interesting topic and maybe even a bit of an oxymoron. But we have been hearing a lot uh, from conservatives and from Republicans uh, in particular about the need uh, to take on the issue of immigration reform. Most of that discussion, by the way, has come in the wake of the presidential election in November. And I think it's a, a pretty fair uh, suspicion that that discussion is being motivated by uh, pragmatic concerns and by political concerns. If you look at what happened uh, in the election, uh, the, the uh, Hispanic population did not vote in great numbers for the Republican nominee for president. And the Hispanic population has become a much more important and decisive factor uh, in the general election. Uh, in uh, 2012, 10% of the electorate uh, was comprised of Hispanic voters. That's up, by the way, from 2008 when it was 9% and from 2004 when the percentage of Hispanics uh, in the electorate was only 8%. Uh, and by the way, it's not as anybody who knows anything about the Hispanic population uh, realizes, this is not an evenly distributed population. There are uh, Hispanics uh, are more concentrated uh, in the Southwest and in certain uh, states uh, than they are uh, generally spread throughout the country, although even this is changing. And Hispanics that almost uh, exclusively uh, were present in the American Southwest uh, three decades ago are in fact spreading out and there are now Hispanic populations in places that uh, would have at that time been considered unlikely. But if you look at the proportion of the electorate that was made up of Hispanic voters in the last election, in Colorado, 14% of the electorate was Hispanic. Uh, in uh, Florida, 17% was. And in Nevada, 18% uh, were Hispanics. Uh, you might also know, if you follow politics, uh, that the three states that I just mentioned all went for President Obama, uh, even though uh, they have traditionally uh, been uh, certainly as likely, in more, most cases, more likely uh, to go for the Republican nominee. Now, having talked about uh, a little bit about the demographics of the Hispanic population, uh, I think one of the things that many people don't realize is that the Hispanic population will continue to grow and be a larger and larger factor uh, in uh, the United States uh, and in the electorate, even if all immigration, legal and illegal, were to stop today. 22% of all children in the United States today under the age of 18 are Hispanic. So that population of potential voters is going to continue to grow.